Hey there, it's Red. So today I'm bringing you another makeup look, and maybe this time I actually will record a voiceover. We'll see. Probably. Maybe. We'll see. Today's look is going to revolve around black lipstick. I adore black lipstick. I don't wear it nearly as much as I should for how much I love it. But I wanted to show you how I like to wear my black lipstick to make it a little bit more wearable. I mean, it's always going to be somewhat intense because you're wearing black lipstick. But I wanted to show you how I do the rest of my face, how I do the eyes and things like that to make this... Oh, I'm dropping it. Uh, to make this a little bit more wearable, a little bit like less intense, you know. And how I do that is definitely by choosing one or the other when it comes to eyes and lips. And so I'm going to show you how I like to do my eye makeup in order to make this a little bit more wearable throughout my day. And yeah. So prior to starting this video, I did moisturize already, as always, because I don't want to film and then wait 15 minutes and then start filming. So about, you know. Um, I also exfoliated my lips, which I might do a little bit more because they're still a little bit dry. And for that, I used the Mary Kay Satin Lips Lip Mask. Never really bought Mary Kay products before. I think I'd had like one other Mary Kay product in my life, and it was like a moisturizer that I had for a while. And this is actually really cool. I bought it for my friend's client who sells Mary Kay, and she had me try it, and I actually really liked it. It just, you can see, it's just like a little bitty stuff. You rub it on your lips. Mmm. -hmm. And it has like, it feels like almost slightly sandy, but they're like, the particles are not big. Like the particles are, they don't feel like, you know, like not like regular face scrubs and stuff that are usually pretty rocky. So I guess you're supposed to let it sit for like two minutes and sometimes I do that, but not today. So then what I like to do after I've like rubbed it around on my lips, I like to take a damp washcloth and just scrub away any dead skin, anything like that that's just dry and gross and it's going to prevent our lipstick from looking decent. Because with a lipstick, especially something dark and matte, they're not going to help it. It's, they're not going to help your lips when it comes to moisturizing. And so if my lips are already ridiculously dry when I put it on the li the lipstick, no matter whether it's regular lipstick or liquid lipstick like I'm using today, it's just not going to help. So then I'm going to put my lip balm on before I do any of the rest of my makeup because I want it to be able to absorb. And I always use the same lip conditioner, always. Always. I love it so much. And it's the Hemp Lip Conditioner from The Body Shop. I'm obsessed with The Body Shop's products. They just, they're so great for, like, they have really, really good ingredients. And they're just really, really great for people with problematic skin. Like, my skin's dry, my skin's sensitive, and it's just... <sighs> and it says it is dermatologically tested. That is a mouthful. And it works for very, very dry skin. And honestly, I live off of this stuff. I live off of it. I, if I, I've lost them a couple of times and I immediately have to run out and buy more because I just, I can't live without it. But let's get on with everything, shall we? So I'm going to start off by priming my face with Nivea Men's Aftershave Balm, which is kind of a YouTube beauty hack right now. And it is a great $6 alternative to those $30 primers. And it works amazing. Then I'm going in with my Born This Way in Warm Foundation, and I'm applying that with the Beauty Blender. I just pump a little bit out on a flat, clean surface, dip my Beauty Blender in, and just start bouncing that all over my face. I highly recommend the Beauty Blender, especially if you have dry skin, because brushes can often exfoliate that dry skin and make your makeup look patchy. The Beauty Blender does not do that, and it makes your foundation look a lot better. Then after I apply my foundation, I go back in with my MAC Prep and Prime highlighting pen and apply that under my eyes, a little bit on my forehead, down the bridge of my nose, on my cupid's bow, and on my chin. Basically, if you look like a tribal warrior princess, you're doing it right.
Then I'm just going to blend it all out with my beauty blender. Just blend, 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 and make it look all seamless. Then I'm gonna go in with my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer and I'm gonna apply that under my eyes on any blemishes or dark spots since after all I'm trying to look like a presentable human being and make myself look like I'm made out of plastic. Then I'm just setting my under eyes with the matte highlighter in the Hashtag Shape Matters palette by Smashbox. Then on a giant powder brush, I'm going to take my Makeup Forever HD Translucent Powder and just set the rest of my foundation. I'm careful not to use too much because again, dry skin, don't want it to look cakey. So I skipped filming my eyebrows just because you guys have seen it before and it just takes up way too much time in this video, but this is just me carving out my eyebrows with a little bit of concealer just to make them pop. I normally skip this step. But considering I'm doing such a bold lip, I just want everything to be very crisp and defined. Then I'm going in and priming my eyes with the Urban Decay Primer Potion in Eden. And as if one primer wasn't good enough for this look, I decided to go in with my MAC Paint Pot in Soft Ochre and apply that all over my lid. Then I'm going in with the eyeshadow from my Tarte Light Up the Party palette in Eggnog. I love this color, it's kind of a yellowish nude and basically it's the color of Eggnog so it's named very very appropriately and I'm obsessed with it. Even though I actually kind of hate eggnog. Then from the same palette I'm taking Peach on Earth and I'm applying that with a blender brush just in my crease to serve as my transition shade. Also from the same palette, I'm going in with Baby It's Gold outside and applying that all over my lid. And it's just kind of a more subtle gold eyeshadow. Then in my outer corner and in my crease, I'm going in with Max Brown Script and just applying that with a blender brush and just blending, blending, blending until it looks super smooth and not awful. Next, I'm just going to go in with my Becca Highlighter in Moonstone, and I'm going to apply that beneath my brow on the inner corner of my eye, and then blend it across my lid. And keep in mind that this highlighter is designed for the face, not for your eyes, although I've personally never had a problem using it on my eyes. If you have sensitive eyes or you're worried about it at all, then I would just stay away from it or proceed with caution. I just want to throw that out there. It's designed for the face, not for the eyes. Then we're just going to blend all those colors together. Then I'm just going in with Max Eyeshadow in Texture and I'm just applying that to the outer corner just because I wanted to give it a little bit more oomph without making it too dark, but I did want to add a little bit more color. Then just blend, blend, blend. Again, that's like the theme of this video, blend. Artist liner in black and I just really hate seeing that gap in my lashes when I do my liner so this just kind of prevents that. I also went in and did a very thin bar line using my Tardis eyeliner but I am the queen of going out of shot so I just edited it out and then I'm going in with the Sephora liquid liner and doing a very very small wing. I didn't want to do anything too dramatic with my liner because it's all about the lips. It's all about the lips. The focus is not our eyes. Then using a small flat brush, I'm just taking texture and applying that very close to my lash lines on the outer corner just to bring down the color a little bit. Then I'm just going to go ahead and curl my lashes and apply mascara and I am using CoverGirl Fusion Mascara and I'm applying that to all of my top lashes 
into the outer corner of my bottom lashes since that's just personally how I like to do it for my eye shape. I also applied a NYX highlighting pencil to my bottom waterline, but I lost the footage so it's not in here. Sorry. Then I'm just going to go ahead and contour just a little bit with the darkest shade in my hashtag shape matters palette and then I'm going to take the bronzer from the same palette and apply that on my cheeks and a little bit on my forehead you know the usual places I'm not big on like major contouring I just I don't know if I'm just not any good at it or I'm just too lazy to do it so everything I do is with a very light touch Then I'm just going to go in with my Becca highlighter in Moonstone again and apply that on the tops of my cheekbones, the bridge of my nose. Then I'm taking a darker red blush and I'm going to apply that with a duo fiber brush on my cheeks just for a lighter application. Then I'm going to go in with my lip liner in Night Moth. And you can really just use any dark lip liner that you have and take your time, line your lips carefully, and I personally like to fill them in with the liner. I feel like it makes my lipstick last longer. Then I'm going to go in with my Kat Von D Liquid Lipstick in Witches. And I did end up switching up the brush that I was using because this one was just not applying it well. And I decided to just randomly try an angled liner brush. And somehow that worked. I feel like it shouldn't have worked, but it did. So if you guys want a super, super awesome, easy application for liquid lipstick, grab an angled liner brush. I swear it is the easiest thing ever and I'm so glad that I figured this out because I feel like this video changed how I do liquid lipstick forever. I personally find it much easier to apply liquid lipstick with a brush rather than using the doe foot applicator that it comes with. I might use that a little bit in the middle and then spread it out, but as far as lining my lips with the color and everything, it's just I always seem to make a mess and it bleeds if I try to only use the doe foot. So I highly, highly, highly recommend using a lip brush or in my case, an angled liner brush. Now whenever I do any dark lipstick, I always, always, always go in with a small brush and a little bit of concealer and just go along the outside of my lips because it just helps create that really crisp line, plus it's going to cover up any imperfections or mistakes you might have made while applying your lipstick. And if you get any of that concealer on your actual lipstick, just go back in and touch it up. Not a big deal. And there you go. This is my slightly more wearable look for Boac lipstick.